The US Navy introduced the Littoral Combat Ships, which are compact surface combatants costing $500 million. More than 17 years ago, the US Navy revealed the innovative Littoral Combat Ships, or LCS, designed to excel in nearshore environments. These ships are expertly engineered to swiftly counter contemporary coastal threats such as missile-equipped boats, small submarines, and mines. The LCS is a category of compact surface combatants, equipped with specialized capabilities to effectively tackle global challenges in coastal areas. Its purpose is to enable joint force entry into these littoral regions, operating autonomously or as part of a networked battle force alongside larger multi-mission surface combatants, even in high-threat environments. Since its creation, the LCS has been embroiled in controversy due to delays, exceeding costs, and disapproval from certain sectors of the national security community. The ship has been under intense scrutiny, with doubts raised about its effectiveness compared to other ships, such as guided missile frigates. Some have proposed considering alternatives like fast attack craft, small corvettes, and specialized single mission vessels for mine warfare. Ultimately, the decision on the most suitable option will hinge on the Navy's future fleet needs. The US Navy requires a new element for its battle force, a cost-effective, self-deployable, and adaptable multi-role warship tailored for naval battle network operations in contested littorals. This concept came to fruition in 2003, when the Navy introduced its inaugural experimental LCS Sea Fighter, known as the Fast SEF Frame, or FSF-1, as the Oliver Hazard Perry Osprey class mine hunter and Avenger class mine countermeasure ships were approaching retirement. Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics presented their design proposals after the US Navy announced the LCS requirement. The Navy selected two competing designs for the LCS program, Lockheed Martin's monohull design and General Dynamics Trimaran hull design, later acquired by US to USA. These designs offered distinct approaches to meet the Navy's needs for speed, flexibility, and modularity. Ultimately, both designs were funded as two variants of the class. Secretary of the Navy, Gordon R. England, made the announcement that the initial LCS would bear the name USS Freedom. On November 8, 2008, LCS-1 was officially commissioned in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Following suit, the LCS-2 ship was commissioned on January 6, 2010, in Mobile, Alabama. One of the challenges faced by littoral combat ships is their limited firepower, which becomes a concern when considering the aluminum hull of the Independence. This raises doubts about the ship's survivability. However, the Navy has actively worked to tackle these issues and has continuously enhanced the original platform to enable it to support a broader array of weapon systems. The Navy is actively working on enhancing the capabilities of the LCS by conducting tests on a new combat system. This system is designed to qualify the littoral combat ship for military missions by conducting live-fire exercises, which will ultimately improve the ship's readiness for major maritime warfare. As part of this effort, new government-furnished equipment is being introduced to enhance fire control targeting and integration across various shipboard weapon systems, including CRAM. The ship launch CYS utilizes a phones gun that can fire 4,500 small projectiles per minute to cover a wide area. On the other hand, CRAM replaces the gun with larger, longer-range rolling airframe missiles and uses a 20mm cannon to engage threats in close proximity to the ship. CRAM fires these rolling airframe missiles from an 11 missile battery. These missiles are considered fire and forget as they utilize radio frequency detection technology and heat-seeking infrared sensors to autonomously intercept and destroy approaching threats. In 2019, the Navy deployed the Naval Strike Missile at the San Diego base, Gabriel G. Ford, weighing just over 880 pounds. The missile boasts a range exceeding 115 miles. Despite the NSM's superior range compared to the Harpoon anti-ship missile, LCSs are lacking in long-range fire control systems for target detection at such distances. The potential advancement of littoral combat ships is indicated by the probable utilization of the standard Missile 6, also referred to as an SM-6. On September 18, 2023, 
the Independence Class LCS Savannah, set sail from San Diego, carrying unconventional cargo on its flight deck. A 40 feet long gray container and a trailer mounted radar, both linked by lengthy neon orange cables to the vessel's superstructure. The US Pacific Fleet later verified a successful test launch of SM-6 supersonic missiles in the Eastern Pacific, suggesting a path for the lightly armed ship class to potentially contribute to a traditional naval battle. Naval Surface Forces mentioned that the test is part of continuous experimentation to determine the feasibility of a mobile launch system on ships like LCS. Despite the advancements achieved, the Navy faces challenges due to the high cost of the LCS class, which hampers its ability to effectively fulfill its intended missions. Nevertheless, the LCS is equipped with state-of-the-art advanced core weapon systems, extensive combat capabilities, and innovative design and propulsion systems, enabling it to undertake a variety of missions. In both littoral waters and deep seas, core ship weapons are essential for defensive and offensive operations. One key element is the 57mm Mark 110 gun system, which can fire automatic rounds at a rapid rate of 220 rounds per minute. This gun mount provides high rates of fire and precision, making it effective against various threats. The RIM-116 RAM on the Freedom variant further enhances self-defense capabilities, serving as a cost-effective system against anti-ship cruise missiles. The RAM is a critical asset. On the other hand, the Independence variant class is equipped with the CRAM. Recently, the latest version of the Freedom class LCS has also been outfitted with the CRAM system, the LCS is outfitted with the Automatic Launch of Expendables decoy system. Surface warfare features include 30mm gun systems, 11M rigid hull inflatable boats, surface-to-surface -surface missile module, MH-60R armed with Hellfire missiles, and Fire Scout vertical takeoff unmanned aerial vehicle. The Surface Warfare Mission module is specifically designed to combat small boats and is recognized as the the Mine Countermeasure Module is designed for the specific tasks of mine sweeping, remotely detecting and bypassing mines, as well as mine hunting, detecting, and disabling. It emphasizes influence mine hunting through the use of acoustic and magnetic signatures, rather than contact or mechanical methods. The module includes the Airborne Laser Mine Detection System, Airborne Mine Neutralization System, Remote Mine Hunting System, Unmanned Influence Sweep System, and knife fish unmanned underwater vehicle. These cutting edge systems are essential for improving the Navy's mine countermeasure capabilities in difficult underwater conditions. The littoral combat ships were created for anti-submarine warfare with the goal of tracking and destroying submarines using sonar devices, helicopters, and torpedoes. Unfortunately, due to poor communication between the systems, the towed sonar was unable to effectively operate in the vessel's wake and the Freedom class was deemed too loud for submarine hunting. Consequently, the Navy decided to discontinue this function in 2022. The Navy has been retiring several littoral combat ships well before their expected lifespan. These ships, meant to last 25 years, are being decommissioned after less than a decade of service. Each ship costs around $500 million, with some exceeding $600 million when factoring in mission packages. Mark Montgomery, a retired Navy Rear Admiral and Senior Fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy's think tank, stated, I believe we are retiring ships that are more of a maintenance burden rather than a smooth sailing experience. Some of the retired ships include the USS Freedom, USS Independence, USS Coronado, USS Milwaukee, USS Detroit, USS Sioux City, and more. In the future, the Navy intends to retire numerous other LCS warships due to their inefficient anti-submarine warfare systems, incapability to carry out the Navy's missions, frequent malfunctions, and structural issues in critical areas of the ships. The fate of the LCS is unclear. Only time will reveal if these ships will be phased out.